George Crump, lead analyst with Stuart Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, joining me is Matt Key, Senior Applications Engineer with Texas Memory Systems. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, George. You know, we've been working a lot lately with uh, data centers that are have started that sort of virtualization journey. Maybe they're kind of halfway down the path, and, and they're reaching a point now where mechanical storage is starting to become a performance problem for us. Uh, they've heard a lot about all this solid state disk stuff and, and, and you know, they, they go to like a VM world and they're probably overwhelmed with the number of choices that are available yes. to them, right? Um, so let, let's, in the next few minutes, try to help them kind of navigate their way through this, right? Um, so first of all, let's talk about, uh, there's really two classes if we kind of break it down at a very high level. We've got sort of server side abilities or server side SSDs and then we've got uh, network or shared uh, SSDs. How do those map out for us? It's pretty much all what's dependent upon the application. So we okay. look at IT from a holistic perspective as an approach to saving time and money. So uh, when it comes to value from what we offer in an infrastructure, it's all bound to what we can deliver best to the end user or best to the application. So we look at PCI as an attachment method for SSDs or for some kind of caching mechanism. It's great to one specific application. It's now, it, PCI, that's what we're talking about there, is we're talking about flash memory on a board that goes inside a server, and then the, the, essentially the CPU is talking directly to that PCI, uh, the SSD on that PCI, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Sorry. So we, are, we have dedicated attached storage. Note, it's not too far different from traditional DAS to where we offer a very high speed, high bandwidth storage platform to a specific application or set of applications within a physical server. Okay. Now network attached storage takes the values of SANs, the essentially irrefutable value that why SANs were implemented in the first place, of being more efficient and more effective with growing capacities, growing tolerance in, in terms of faults, uh, and growing management capabilities with a, a storage centric approach and still providing value to these end applications. Okay. So if we offer if we offer SSD in the network side, we can continue to to leverage higher performance on the application and better end user experiences without having to forfeit or give up these values of SANS to begin with. So you're an application guy. So you know, again, we've got the this uh, guy that's maybe uh, you know, virtualized. He's reaching a performance problem. Uh, and he's looking at SSD, how do you kind of help him sort of work through that initial first steps of which SSD he should go with? We kind of look at scale. So there are certain elements that we look at. Uh, we look from zero, of course, being no memory needed, to about 512 gigabytes. Okay. And in this capacities of application, then we can look at SSD, we can look at disk, but more, the best fit right now is coming into DRAM. So okay. we can expand on DRAM. The more RAM we have, the less I.O. we have to go to traditional So that would be disk. RAM inside the server? That is, yes, sir. Okay. RAM inside the okay. server. Uh, if we need persistence with that, too, then, of course, if we need immediate benefit from the I.O. rather than a prolonged, you know, through caching, through some kind of substitute for avoiding, you know, avoiding the, the I.O. to the disk, mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, we look at SSD as complement to this. But this right here provides the best value to the customer in this small scale of capacity. Okay, and so by volatility, we're talking about, of course, that if, if you lose power on a, on a server with DRAM, you also lose data. So if we want non-volatile, that's what yeah. we're talking about. We lose, we lose the in-RAM data, yes. Right. Yeah, so okay. we're not essentially data loss, we're, we're, we're performance loss. Okay. So if we have to come back around with another uh, nature of, of DRAM caching, of course, it goes to another warming cycle. Okay, great. So the next capacity stretch is from this 512 gigabytes up to about two terabytes. Okay. And um, pardon my chicken scratch there. No problem. So in this realm right here, we're in a nature where we're presenting value add to specific applications of looking at inside the server. Okay. So we, we're in this realm. We're beyond the cost effectiveness of DRAM. Mm -hmm. We can go beyond this scale of DRAM inside servers, but we're looking at higher density DRAM chips, looking at, at, at multi, multi socket systems that bring more compute than necessary for the DRAM capacity that we're trying to gotcha. achieve. Right. So if we're having to license more additional CPUs for a single application that doesn't need those additional CPUs, doesn't then we make look sense. extreme software costs associated okay. with that too. Great. Okay. So this right here is essentially this this PCIe or DAS market. Okay. So we're gonna look at PCI attached, we're gonna look at PCI controller with traditional SATA or SAS attached SSDs in this in this market right here. Um, it is absolutely specific to the physical host. Now, in this market, are we looking at uh, PCIe, uh, flash PCIe, as almost basically cheap DRAM in a, in a way? 
Almost. Okay. Uh, it, it's that middle ground. So DRAM is extremely fast. A couple magnitudes slower is flash, and then mm -hmm. a couple magnitudes slower than that is, is spinning disk. Right. All the way down to tape. And okay. then past tape, of course, is pen and paper. So <laughs> we look at uh, PCIe as a complement to DRAM, but not a substitute for DRAM. Okay. Great. Uh, there's, there's ways of leveraging flash as memory. They're not nearly as effective as using memory as memory. Sure. Um, but in time, that may, that may come to fruition where we see more operating system approach to, to using flash as, as traditional memory. Okay. Um, rule of thumb, anything that's not in DRAM is going to have to go back to something physical. Okay, great. So, so at the two terabytes plus, we're going here to network. And the reason for that is because flash at the bit level is, is very unreliable. And when we do larger scales of this unreliable media, you have to introduce more and more protections. Okay. So you can, by all means, you're welcome to scale out your infrastructure on multiple PCI or multiple DAS uh, devices. Mm -hmm. But as you increase this capacity across the scale, you'll find that you either have to duplicate or triplicate the cost of storage. Gotcha. Or you go to the network approach and you put the resiliencies that SANs provide for the protection of the flash. Okay. So this right here, in a matter of scales, will help determine whether or not customers should stay on PCI and local attached SSD, or they should go to the network for this uh, same level of performance advantage, but without compromising the management and the maintenance and the reliability of the flash. And, and I assume at this level in the, in the network side, I gain uh, maybe some uh, capacity efficiency, because if I have a server that only needs you know, 20 gig and another server that needs a terabyte and a half, I can divide this network uh, flash up exactly as the servers need it, right? Yes, absolutely. OK. So if you had essentially, I'll make a little prettier schematic here. OK. I have one physical box and another physical box. And these boxes right here host an array of virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And so these virtual machines right here, uh, I do not know their load. I'm not the applications guy. I'm an infrastructure guy. These mm -hmm. guys may spawn and be automatically load balanced. These guys may spawn and essentially create hotspots within a physical machine. Okay. So if I have two VMs that are creating a hotspot here and say a hotspot here, this guy right here is going to face, be fairly stagnant. Right. So if I have my little DAS approach to SSD, I'm getting contention on this DAS. Well, this DAS right here is staying fairly stagnant. OK, I got it. So if I were to avoid the local attached PCIe approach, I can go to the network and see full value add regardless of whether these VMs are within a single physical server or span across multiple physical servers. OK, great. So I, I assume also this would help. The network uh, option also helps in, in specifically the VMware environment where we're talking about vMotion and, and things like that as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Because okay. all, all of those bells and whistles that VMware provides as additional value add for their software offering uh, is essentially a, a agnostic to whatever lies underneath. Okay. So these approaches right here may or may not require other operational uh, uh, steps in order to provide these vMotion capabilities. Uh, other features can also be implemented down here. We can also do array-based replication, dedupe, compression on the array side right. that you would not be able to achieve on the server side because of these vMotion requirements. Okay, great. So, I, Matt, I really like this as a breakdown because this is a real simple category for people to look at. They're going to know how much capacity they need and they can kind of target it. Now, just to clarify, though, this capacity you've written up here is, is cumulative for the environment? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that if I have a two terabyte total, then that's when I need to start looking at networking and dividing that up. Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, Matt, thanks for coming in today. I appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, George. Again, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Stay tuned for future videos.